Now, earlier this year, we met with Creality at TCT in Detroit. And it was an amazing experience looking at all the new products that they were launching, as well as participating in some of the events that they had. One of the things I was most excited about was the K2 Pro. So I was really looking forward to getting that product in our farm, testing it out, and seeing how well it would do. Matter of fact, the actual print that you see here inside of the K2 Pro is the exact same print that I printed on the K2 Plus. And I said, hey, why not? I want to print it again and see how well it looks. And I was not disappointed. Amazing print quality, as you can see there, um, inside of the K2 Pro. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the K2 Pro. We're going to be looking at it from a print farm perspective, as I have several of the Creality products in our print farm, and really are looking at how well they perform, how reliable they are, and let's face it, how much has it matured since the K2 Plus? K2 Plus is a great printer. My experience has been fantastic, but it wasn't without its little blemishes and warts. Have they improved? Is this much more mature than the K2 Plus? What's going to be your experience out of the box? I'll share with you what my experience has been and why I think that this is a solid printer. For those of you who want to have a printer at home, if you want to add something to your farm that's multicolor, or you just want to have something for fun around your house, let's get right to it. Now, before going through the specs, I wanted to share with you my print experience and the print quality of what we were able to print uh, on the K2 Pro. Now, I've had the printer for just a little bit over a week now, and I haven't been able to put hundreds of hours of printing on it, but I have put it through several uh, different prints that we would print in our print farm. And I've also then done some fun stuff, like the stuff that you see right here, the uh, this guy right here. We typically wouldn't produce this uh, for for our business, but this is a fun mass, and now I have two of them. And one of the things I wanted to do was just see how well it would be able to produce this. By the way, this is using all Creality Hyper uh, PLA. All right, we'll go ahead and open this up, and we'll take out the mask. So here you can see just the overall quality is spectacular. It didn't have any print failures. Uh, this was tree supports, was very easy to clean off. And once again, the actual finish um, is fantastic. I just wish I could figure out how to size this correctly so it would fit me. This is my second one and it's not quite right. And after putting in all the hours, I just put it on the shelf. But I am, again, amazed with the overall quality. Um, in addition to printing out <laughs> the actual mask, we went ahead and printed out uh, some stuff for Halloween coming up. I printed this with another uh, machine as well, and I wanted to do this on the K2 Plus. And this is using Creality Hyper PLA, right? This came out spectacular. Nilda was looking for some ghosts to have around the house for this coming holiday and wanted to have something that would hold beverages. So this is a beverage holder. Uh, it is hollow, so you'll be able to put some tea lights in there. And this printed without any kind of issues, flawless. There were no supports here. So the eyes, you know, there was no supports. Actually, there was no supports anywhere with this model. And I want to say that this came out really, really nice. And if we put it in the K2 Pro, you'll see how he fits there nicely. It was, it's just a great print. And Nilda really loved it, which makes me even happier. Uh, we also then, um, getting to business, we do a lot of business prints, but I want to show you the difference in the build plates and we'll go over the specs. So this is the K2 Plus, massive, massive build plate. And if I were to take the K2 Pro and put it right next to it, so that you get a sense of scale, this is the difference that you're looking at. Now, when you look at it, you know, it shouldn't turn you off that it's a little bit smaller. I actually like that it's a little bit smaller. It gives me some variety. Uh, could I use a, another K2 Plus size printer? Absolutely, I can. And um, I'm actually going bigger and bigger given um, all the prints that we're doing. But this has its place. It definitely has its place. It's actually a little bit larger than a X1 Carbon. So if we... I'm going to bring in an X1 Carbon build plate in so that you guys can see that. So this one is a little well used. So we're going to bring this in and put it next to it. Uh, we'll put it right there. That's kind of like the size difference. So you can see this is a significant upgrade from a P1P or a uh, or even an X1C. Uh, now, if you're wondering what the size difference is when it comes to an H2S, I don't have one. We have one coming in. Uh, actually, uh, this week, 
that we'll be able to then uh, compare the size of the beds. But for now, I don't have a comparison to show you. But all in all, I'll tell you, I'm really, really happy with the overall experience that we have with the prints. Let me show you more of the prints. So we produce a lot of fixtures, right, in our, in our business. And what we look for is having fixtures that have a good finish, right, because that's what our customers expect. We like detailed and we like accuracy. Uh, these are some of the fixtures that we create. Uh, this is a cover to a, a box that we create for uh, one of the product, for one of our product lines. And this will give you a sense of what that first layer looks like. This is an amazing first layer. And, and this is out of the box. No tweaking, no filament tuning. This is just run. And I mentioned in my intro how mature was the, again, the K2 line. I find that, especially with this, because I've had my K2 Plus for a while now, this is super mature. It just felt very polished. It felt, you know, adult-like when it came to the overall printer. And when I'm printing, this is the kind of quality I'm getting. We also then print uh, some more functional parts. This is a a, a splitter for an, an a, 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 what is it called, an air purifier, right? And the overall quality is also really really good look at that finish there people get our parts and they go like oh my god this looks so good it looks like professionally done and i try to say yeah it was professionally done we, we pride ourselves by the quality that we produce uh, we do also these adapters for the vents these are all done on the k2 pro and again fantastic uh, i do have other brands by the way guys so we use in our farm we have Bamboo, we have Creality are the primary two. Probably about 90% of the farm is Bamboo, and then the rest for the large formats, um, I have some Creality's. I do have a Prusa, but it's collecting dust right now. I'm trying to fix it, um, a Prusa XL. So we've been using these more than anything else. I'm hoping that uh, my Prusa XL can be resurrected and we'll be able to get it going. But we just haven't had a really good experience with Prusa. Uh, so we stick with the bamboo line and with the uh, with the Creality line. Those are our go-to uh, printers. Uh, these are more jigs that we produce, and this is again uh, for a different uh, system. We do printing not just for consumers like B two C, but we also do B two B. So we do a lot of B two B production work. And you know, this is what we're talking about: this kind of quality and this kind of accuracy coming off of this. And again, this this print bed is just so suitable for it. It's not as large as my K2 Plus, but it's large enough for this type of work that we're printing. And you can see, I can fit this either way on this bed, which makes a lot of sense for us. And I wanted to also do some more fun stuff because we typically look at functional parts for us. Uh, here is a model, another model uh, that we created. Now, I did not clean this up because I wanted to show you, you know, some of the stuff that's going on here. But so I have still some of the, uh, the supports here. But can you create uh, products that typically you would go to a resin printer to print? And the absolute answer is yes. Uh, look at the detail in the arms right there. All right, look at the jacket. That looks really good. So, um, again, really, really, really nice print. And look at the detail in the back. All right, really love it. We then also printed the multicolor Benchy. Here you go. All right. That came out really nice. I have one other cool one that I want to show you. Now, this was the, the last multicolor print that we printed. And this took one day and 19 hours. There's a lot of poop here. <laughs> a lot of it because of the actual switching back and forth. So take a look at this right here. Isn't this amazing? Look at that quality. Right? No failures. This is what I was saying about how mature the product just feels just out of the box. Right? That first layer, beautiful. And again, the supports I got, I did a better job here, was able to take out the supports and believe me, there's supports everywhere to get this going. But that looks amazing. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, so we also then did, I'll put this guy here, we did a, a sign, a license plate. So bring this into view right here. Uh, pretty simple, black and white, but that's how long our channel has been up. Thank you for your support. And hopefully we'll be around 
a lot longer. So let's talk about the specs and we'll also go through a print so that you can see what you can expect. All right, so let's talk about the specs for a little bit because this is a little bit small as you can see from the build plate that we saw, but not by much. We're talking about 300 by 300 by 300 millimeter build plate, which I think is gonna be larger uh, for most folks uh, for their needs. But depending on the type of work that you're doing, you could definitely use something larger like I do. But I think that this has a great place in our shop. We can actually have up to 16 colors if we wanted uh, with this printer. So the CFS that you see at the very top, and we'll take a look at that in a couple seconds, supports four different colors or four rolls of filament. And then you could actually have uh, four of those giving you up to 16. It does have active chamber heating, right? So that means that you're gonna be able to use ABS, PPACF, it has dual AI cameras, it has smart leveling, and basically it's gonna be able to produce a tall print, right? 300 millimeters. So you're having something, you saw how big my, the ghost was, you saw the mask that we did. Uh, this guy was on the little smaller side because again, this was a, so much different color changes. This would have taken too long for me. So I could have probably gone a little bit larger, but it would just been a little bit long. Uh, what you're looking at here is the K2 Pro combo, right? Because it has the CFS and then it has a printer. And I would say, you know, for me, that would be the way to go. You really want to take advantage of the multi-material solution. You want to take advantage of the, uh, again, ability to have multiple colors. And this is how I would do it, uh, having the combo versus the single printer. But you could get the single printer by itself and then upgrade later if that is something that um, you have some type of budget limitations that you're working with. So just something to be aware of. Now, you saw the multicolor material print, uh, bench sheet. That took a little bit longer, right? Uh, but it was multicolor and the poop that it created or at least the filament tower that it created wasn't that large That guy over there like I mentioned took a lot both um, Here in the CFS at the very top and also on the side. So uh, Metal uh, material you have a polycarbonate material on the side you have here a USB port for loading uh, Prints you have an NFC reader here, right? That's going to be able to read your filament when you have the side mount you basically have your display and your display here is just like the K2 Plus. Menus are standard, your home with all your details of your uh, current state of your printer, your, again, access, filament, print settings, calibration settings, uh, previous uh, prints, and you can see we've been printing like crazy. You have here um, settings area, and this is where you do your firmware and all that good stuff. Um, inside, what you'll notice is it doesn't have the same amount of cooling as your K2 Plus, but your K2 Plus is larger. So it only has one fan as opposed to two because it doesn't need that large area. It has a, again, the filtration, only one, doesn't need two because, again, about the size. It has the same um, area that does the, uh, the little uh, cleaning of the nozzle, right? So you have your nozzle cleaner and then you have your poop ejector there. And I would say that that's probably the area that I am... It's just loud. I wish it was quieter when it came to that exchange back there. And you're going to hear that in a couple seconds when we turn it on. Uh, on the bottom here, I wanted to highlight something that is important to me. And I see some printer uh, manufacturers don't really think about this. Uh, Bamboo definitely does. Creality definitely does. And that is I can put my hand in here and wipe out and things come out completely. It just swipes out. There is, there's no ledge, let me uh, pan down a little bit, there's no ledge here, right? This comes out, which makes it really easy to clean any kind of filament debris that you may have inside the printer. And I absolutely love that. Um, inside, you don't have the same type of insulation. Let's turn over here for a second, right? That you have with the K2 Plus. You have the polycarbonate on the side, but it's really not loud, it's quiet, and it's a really good experience. Now the door is a nice door. It's glass, it feels good. It, doesn't swing open by mistake. It doesn't though have a stop. It has a small stop. So you can see when I move it kind of like it doesn't swing open on its own. On the very top, we have more glass. And then here you have uh, the CFS. Now this CFS does not have a dryer built in. I wish it did, it doesn't, but it does give you relative temperature, humidity, and also based on how many you have connected, it gets identified by one, two, three, or four. I'm running um, a couple different type of filaments. Right now I still have right here my uh, Creality Hyper PLA, but I'm also running Polymaker. We typically run Polymaker on our farm and you have you know what's going on over here um, on the um, Hyper PLA side. We've had a great experience with all this. We haven't seen any issues with quality. 
or speed issues regardless of the filament that we use. Now in the back of the printer, everything is very clean. I wish other companies had such a clean implementation when it comes to their um, CFS solution. So here we have our CFS. You see all the connectivity that's going on back here. If I had the external spool mounted, that's where it would go. Over here I have my power, the uh, power cord, boop, and then I have a HD, not an HDMI, but an Ethernet port coming out with again my connection to my CFS. I've launched the print just to give you a sense of what the print experience is like. Uh, an initial launch, the bed's going to lower, it's going to come up, it's going to do some positioning or some calibration, it's going to go to the back, and it's going to clink a couple times on that uh, filament cleaner in the back, as you can see right there. That's probably the loudest part of this experience. I wish it was quieter. Outside of that, everything else is whisper quiet. And even when it starts printing, it is relatively quiet. If you start doing filament changes, that's where I start hearing a lot of the noise, and that's because of that little cleaning section in the back. Outside of that, it's relatively quiet. All right, so the printing is now underway, and I'm gonna stay quiet so you can see how much noise is being generated. That's quiet. And again, this isn't a speed benchy. This is actually a part that we're printing that uh, for, for a customer. And it is, first layer is great. It's gonna come out amazing and it's quiet, super quiet. So what are my thoughts on the K2 Pro? Guys, it's a solid buy, solid buy. Very mature, it just works out of the box and the quality is spectacular. What else can I say? See you in the next video.